Hello everyone, this week we're going to be discussing an additional um, general plot of our um, research novel. My research novel is The Color Purple by Al Alice Walker. And there's so many themes that are there to explore in this book. Um, I'm gonna try and do that um, one by one, so I am not doing injustice to um, the story and at the same time I'm not taking up too much time. It's a story about um, two sisters, Celie and Nettie, and we could also say it's a story about a husband and wife who fall in love with the same woman, that is Chug Avery. It could also be uh, labeled as a queer story because Celie falls in love with uh, Shug Avery and she doesn't find her husband attractive. It could also be a story of um, violence and molestation. Uh, Celie's stepdad um, harasses her and rapes her and she has his children and she has to lose them. Um, later, Nettie um, is with a couple, Samuel and Corrine who have adopted Celie's children, but they don't know uh, who the mother is. So Nettie works as a missionary and goes to Africa with them. Um, Corrine, you know, passes away. She finds a partner in Samuel. Celie, um, at the same time, is um, mothering her, her husband's first wife's children, her husband's children. And uh, one of them is Harpo, who marries Sophia. Sophia is a strong-minded woman who um, doesn't want to be told what to do. Celie is usually beat up by her husband. And initially, Celie finds these emotions in which um, she feels like all women should be treated like she's treated. And then she feels really bad because she tells her, uh, the, her son Harpo to beat up uh, Sophia. And Sophia is a strong woman physically and mentally. So she fights back. There's subplots in the story, you know, um, but uh, something that I would want to focus on, I think I'm, I'm debating right now, is um, Celie's relationship with God. So midway in the story, you know, she says that I'm going to stop writing letters to God because uh, because my her life is so horrible. And Shag Avery, who is at this point Celie's lover, tells her that I find God in everything. I find God in nature. And I do things that make me happy. And I'm, I'm thinking that God is a loving uh, entity. And if I'm happy, then God is happy with me. So there are many places that this relationship is mentioned. And I, I, might, I might explore that because I think I find this uh, idea of God, which is different for different people, uh, very intriguing. But I'm going to find some things to read on it and then sort of decide if I want to go to this direction. So this is page 266 of the novel. Um, this paragraph is about how when Celie feels rejected by Shagavri because Shagavri has um, gone away and she loves her, but she also is um, feeling very bad at this point. So she, uh, she's, this is a letter Celie is writing to Nettie. Oh, she write me now near about every week. Long newsy letters, stuff, full of stuff she thought she had forgot. Plus stuff about the desert and the Indians and the Rocky Mountains. I wish I could be traveling with her, but thank God she able to do it. Sometimes I feel mad at her, feel like I could scratch her hair right off her head. But then I think, Shuck got a right to live too. She got a right to look over the world in whatever company she choose. Just cause I love her, don't take away none of her rights. And I, I think this hit me um, where, where it kind of made a place in my heart because I feel like a lot of times we love people and then we kind of um, capture them in our love, if that makes sense, and expect them to love us as much as we love them and in, in, in the way that we love them, uh, reciprocated for us. And this just, you know, this, the, these few sentences were so beautiful when Celie, being a simple-minded person, says that, you know, Shag Avery deserves to um, explore, explore the world, have experiences, you know, as she wants. And just because Celie loves her doesn't mean that her love is restricted and she should only experience things with Celie. So I think this this kind of really um, made sense for me.